All right, for segment one today, we are in the last, well, I guess for the YouTube side of it, it's the last two episodes of After the Bomb. In this episode, I am going to create from start to finish a mutant animal. And uh, yeah, what you can do to, I'm sorry, I'm looking at chat, got a little, little sidetrack there. Um, I'm going to create a mutant animal from, from beginning to end. You're going to see how the process works. And I will hopefully answer some questions that come up in chat. Of course, if you are watching this on YouTube later after the fact, if you have any questions, go ahead and post it in there. And Heathen Dog, who knows much more about Palladium than I do, uh, will answer it or I will answer it because I do know a fair share myself, especially when it comes to After the Bomb, because I'm a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles player, played that, uh, I've run that, and uh, Robotech more than anything else out of Palladium, just because that's what I played back then. Heathen Dog's got your Heroes Unlimited, your Riffs, and whatever else is going on. And uh, stay tuned for the next video, because there might be a special announcement in there. I said might. I'm going to try to make sure it's in there, but we'll see. RPG Digest is a live stream podcast discussion, not a concise step-by-step -step tutorial. I will go off topic. I don't have Heathen Dog to keep me in line today, so I will go off topic. Those are the links to our website, Discord. Come by our Discord. People are chatting there all the time, uh, and a lot of good conversations going on. A lot of different game types. You're not interested in Palladium, but you want to talk about some other game system, it's probably there, or I can add it. You can watch our videos on Rumble, Odyssey, YouTube, Twitch, and if you want to donate to us, the best way to do it is PayPal or Streamlabs, because YouTube takes 30%, Twitch takes 50%. So, you know, if you like throwing half your money out, that, that's on you. <laughs> and, uh... If you want to give to a charity instead of us you can give to nerds and warriors it's charity drive to support the wounded warrior project description is in the link below or you can use your phone do that qr code thing and it'll take you right there and finally we believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastical worlds and that the focus of your tabletop group should be on role-playing and having a good time the core values of hashtag rpgate and any good tabletop community are escapism not representation entertainment over activism and natural organic inclusion not forced diversity. All right, are we ready for this? Ready for this fun? Share my screen. Where the hell is this? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> Not used to doing it this way. I'm doing everything by myself. Doing it all by myself. Share screen. And I am going to do the center. Boop. Like I said, you're going to see all the, all the dirty slides. But that's because I'm going to have to bounce back and forth uh, for the book. Boom, there we go. But I will put it into presentation mode for now. I don't need that because I'm not, I don't have notes. Go away. All right, so let me get, hey, Fran, how you doing? Uh, you're about to find out. You're about to find out what animal we're doing. And again, like I said, if I miss anything in chat, if so, yeah, you know, please don't spam it. But if you need to duplicate it to get my attention later, go ahead. I'm going to try to try to watch as best I can, but I'm alone. So please bear with me. So why mutant animals? And here's why this is coming out. Now, this is segment one, so I'm not going to say poopoo words. But Crafty, no, he's the one. Actually, he wanted me to do the slides uh, because of the fact that, uh, can I have 11? I think it's a can. Because of the fact that uh, he was using the old colors. You guys aren't going to notice anything, but as a graphic artist, I notice it. I'm like, no! <laughs> uh, he was using the way, way old colors that changed like two years ago. So I had to update the slides. And this, this is a gotcha to him, from him to me. Gotcha! You have to use slides! Ha! But no, they, they work for this con, uh, concept, so we're doing that. Um, you know, there's been some heartburn, apparently, uh, from people covering After the Bomb. Apparently, the only people who play After the Bomb are furries. What? Yep, if you like After the Bomb, apparently you're no better than a 5, 5th edition, whatever term you want to use, furry cartoon. So let me read this to you. This is from Eric Wuchek, rest in peace. I hope I said his name right. The concept behind After the Bomb is novel, but not new. We see animal characters everywhere, in every kind of storytelling medium. Media. From George Orwell's brilliant Animal Farm, to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in comics, television, and movies. From Bugs Bunny through Roger Rabbit. There's been a fascination with animals that mimic the human form or habit. By the way, this was written in 2001. So it is 20 years old, but... This identification with animals goes deep in all our minds, in all our cultures. 
all over the world, in every age and every land, there's always animal icons. Stories of the trickster animal, coyote or dingo, spider or fox, of the wise owl, and their bigger, more powerful, nearly always clueless victims. You can go into werewolves. You can go into Egyptian theology. You can go, like, this is, a, this is not a new premise. But because some things have changed in culture, some things are more exposed, people have heartburn with it. No. Oh, as I'll say in segment two a little bit, I treat mutant animals kind of like, this is like my version of low-powered superheroes. You might like to wear uh, somebody that wears his underwear on the outside of his pants and a cape and tight spandex. That's fine. I like to not wear, because I don't actually dress up when I play, but... <laughs> I, I like to visualize myself as a grizzly bear with teeth that can rip out your throat. You know, things like that. So. All right. So what are we going to cover today? We are going to cover the eight attributes. Animal types. Background education skills. We're going to spend the bio points. We're going to uh, figure out our hit points in SDC, our alignment, and then we'll wrap it all together and I will show you how the character came to be. Uh, through each of the steps here, I'm going to swap out of the slides and I'm going to go to the book to read a couple of things that, that are in the book that I either found interesting or I thought probably should be covered for the purposes of, uh, of comparison. So, hey, why my keys work? Step one, eight attributes. All right, so this is what I rolled and all these dice were rolled on the Discord server. You can look at them. Nice average set of stats there. These don't bother me at all. I know some people be like, oh my God, you don't have anything they, with bonuses, blah, blah, blah. Well, get to that later. Uh, there's no rule that says you have to place them in order. Plus, I would rescind that rule anyway. So uh, this is how I placed them. And I'll explain why I placed them. I know somebody's going to go, you could have min-maxed that better by putting the IQ number elsewhere, blah, blah, blah. No, I did this because this is how I wanted the character to look. I build characters based off of themes. I build characters that seem interesting. I don't go with pure numbers. Now, I did use some numbers <laughs> to help. And that's why you see that nice little note down there. Uh, I placed the eights in physical strength and speed because I know those are the two easiest to increase later. So I don't have to worry about that they're eights. And to be fair, an eight in palladium doesn't really mean much other than carrying capacity. There's really no difference between an 8 and a 15. Other than, like I said, carrying capacity. So, I, uh, I left those uh, attributes there. Alright, now we're going to go into step 2, the animal type. And I rolled the animal. Now, this might disappoint some people. Because I know I mentioned a few times that I was supposed to make a pigeon. Well, it's not a pigeon. It's a duck. And here's why. I read the wrong chart. <laughs> you look at the rolls of 52, which puts it as rural animal, and then 44, that's a duck. Pigeon was off of the urban animals. So I was like, uh-oh, I need to fix that. So uh, ended up being a duck. So what do ducks get? Well, the description here says there are dozens of separate species of aquatic birds, including ducks, geese, swans, and many others. Most are migratory, and I took that, by the way, into consideration when it came to some of the powers that I took later on. I wanted to fill, fit the duck theme. And it says right there, most are migratory and spend most of their time either flying or in the water. And you're going to see that when you see how I built the character. Now, some of that was also influenced by my education, which we'll get to in a little bit. Canadian geese are hooligans. There you go. <laughs> I picture this one actually as a mallard with the green head and everything. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, again, you know, your mileage may vary on that. And when you see the stats, or not the stats, when, you, when we get to the final conclusion here, hopefully you, uh, hopefully you think that I made a, a, a good representative of the game, the duck, and a character just a, as a whole, a playable character. That uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I was done with this character, I actually said, huh, I really want to play this character. I do. I'm not saying that for the stream. I'm not saying that for you. I, I was like, I want to play this character. So. so it starts at size level three for ducks or geese four. I went the duck route, so that's size level three. And if you remember from the past, and we'll talk about this when we get to bio points, but uh, bio E points, I always skip the E for some reason. Um, I think that size level six is the sweet spot and this is no exception in this so uh, we'll be increasing that from size level three to size level six later on 
and it gives you generic weight, you know, uh, length height. Oops. The build medium here is kind of important because that will determine our height and weight later on. Total bio E.75 for the duck, and we'll break that down nice and simply uh, later on. And because I picked a duck, I get plus one to physical endurance. I don't know why ducks get plus one to physical endurance, but I got plus one to physical endurance, and that will be added in later. The Darkwing Duck was my idol when I was young. There we go. No, his name is Dodger. <clears throat> and there are multiple, not innuendos, because that sounds sexual. Um, there are multiple entendres, that also does, uh, as to why his nickname is Dodger. Step three, background, education, and skills. Duck Dodger is one of the reasons that came up. Yes. Oh, Drake Mallard. Oh, that'd be a name. Drake. See? That's already a better name. How did I... Now, uh, look. You can't really see it. I have this little pamphlet right here. I don't know what game it came with or whatever. The Everyone Everywhere list. It's a list of names. I literally rolled up my character's name also. But I like Drake Mallard. <laughs> I like that nerdy ogre. That was good. I can, you actually grab that, put that on screen. Boom. Um, so yeah, my, my name is uh, annoying, but that's fine because I'm going to go by Dodger anyway. So background, education, and skills. Yes, D Dodger is in the 24th and a half century, but there's more to it than that, and you're going to find out. So I rolled a 73, which brings us to Elite Militia. So what is the Elite Militia? Mutant animal military units are often totally self-sufficient raising families in fortified compounds between battles. Their offspring are highly trained militarily, but tend to miss out on some of the civilian skills. Only got five secondary skills. Elite militia tend to treat humans with a professional cool. Okay, so we're, now we're kind of developing an attitude. Now, you don't have to follow you know, into this lockstep, but... All right, so he's probably a guy with a little bit of confidence, which is explained right there with the ME. Well, that's mental endurance, not mental affinity, but uh, uh, he's... he's uh, you know. He sees the world probably for what it is. And you know what comes across humans? Maybe a little standoffish, maybe not, but uh, you're definitely not going to be best of friends. You're going to have to earn his trust if you're human. Because remember, not all humans in this world are bad. So, but we're developing kind of a personality even from that. Of course, your mileage can vary. Just because it says uh, elite militia tend, remember it says tend to treat humans with professional cool, doesn't mean that you have to be like that. You could still be a prankster, you could still be a coward, you could still be whatever. Now, apprenticeships in After the Bomb are like occupational character classes from other Palladium games, or character classes from games you might be used to, like Dungeons & Dragons. I got to choose from Armor, Mechanic, or Weaponsmith. I went with Mechanic. I felt that armor and weaponsmith, this weaponsmith, wow, weaponsmith were too specialized for, for what I was going for with the character. Again, your mileage may vary. Great apprenticeships, lots of good skills, but I wanted to go mechanic because your mechanic is always needed. Oh, isn't Drake Mallard Duckwing's real name? I don't know. He, he may be. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh... I mean, I know what Darkwing Duck is, and I watched it. I, I just, I wasn't that deeply into it. So if that is the case, well, then I couldn't go with that because I'm not going to steal somebody else's name. Have a little imagination, right? So much imagination, I rolled my character's name. <laughs> All right. So after the apprenticeship, which is a whole slew of skills, by the way, well, let's see what I get just for being elite militia. I get hand-to-hand -hand expert to start. Well, right off the bat... What that did to me, and again, I'm kind of foreshadowing some things here, is that prevented me from taking some drawbacks that I may have considered. And by prevented, I mean personally. That doesn't mean you can't do it. There's no rule against it. But there are some things that I could have taken with the duck, like uh, prey mind, uh, which basically means that if you're in a threatening situation, you have to roll a save or you fly away. You're like, nope, I'm scared, I'm out. Because you're, you're used to being prey. I just didn't think that something like that would fit. You no, know, it would have given me bonus points. Because the fact, if I've got hand-to-hand -hand expert, that means I'm trained to fight. Plus, I'm in the elite militia. I'm trained to fight. It just wouldn't make too much sense to do that. No rule against it, but I, li I like to put all of this together. 
Now I get three weapon proficiencies, which I wish it would have mandated one of them based on the equipment list. Because I didn't take it, and now I have a weapon that I'm not proficient in. Now, that doesn't mean I can't shoot it. It just means I don't really know how to maintain it too well. I got a caveat to that. And uh, I don't get the bonuses. But I can still shoot it with the D20, just like normal. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like, oh, I don't know how to use it. I'm fumbling all around with it. No, no, no. It's just I didn't specialize with it. Uh, but it's part of the equipment, as we'll talk uh, down there. Four physical skills. Okay, well, there we go. We got some physical skills. And those are going to help increase my physical strength and speed maybe but there's one physical skill in here that i took because i wanted everybody to either groan or laugh and you are hopefully gonna love it it does add a little silliness factor to the uh to the game that maybe it might go beyond some people's uh desire sometimes mine but i could incorporate it in and still make it meaningful uh, but you'll see what that is in a moment. And two from pilot or technical. I think I took them both from pilot, but we'll see in a moment. And five secondary skills, which again, we'll see later. Special bonuses. So now I get plus 10 M uh, SDC. A little spoiler here. I did size level six, right? I already told you that. That starts with 30 SDC. This bumps up to 40, and I will show all of that later. You don't have to memorize it or write down notes. I've got the notes for you later. Plus one to mental endurance. Plus one to physical prowess. Plus four to speed. Okay, well, there we go. Well, my speed is now a 12, which is average. Above average, average, if you want to get really technical about it, but it's average. Okay. And plus two to disarm and pull punch. Yeah, right, Kevin. Weapons proficiencies are considered specializations, not compens uh, uh, competency. Wow, speaking. Um, the only caveat that I make to that is having a weapon proficiency also lets you take care of the weapon. But I guess you'd, you could consider that a specialization, absolutely. And I got 100 bucks, which I didn't spend at all. It's 100 bucks. You know what? I'll spend it if I ever play the character to buy ammunition or something. Equipment, in addition to basic clothing and traveling equipment. Now, this is a post-apocalyptic world. You don't start with a lot of stuff. Plus, I'm an elite militia. I've probably got my uniform or what, I, what passes as a uniform. English can be hard. Yeah, Englishing can be hard, right? Uh, I have basic, basic clothing, traveling equipment, military quality weapon, assault rifle. That's the one that I'm not proficient with. Well, I'm not specialized in. I, I think that's a better way of saying it. Submachine gun or sniper rifle. I went with the assault rifle because it just made more sense for a soldierly type person. And I'm not a sniper. Uh, a pistol, which, I'm, which I did take a weapon proficiency in. And good quality ancient weapon, which I'm going to hold on to that one for a moment. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. And my lip is chapping up here. Relatives and connections. So the last thing you get from Elite Militia, and this is more just of a role-playing deal, but uh, in addition to having a close-knit family, the character is part of a brotherhood of former military companions. While the character can call on any member of the brotherhood for help, the character also feels obligated to help when one of the brotherhood is in trouble. So. You can't just, it isn't one-way street here. It isn't like, oh, I call on you, but that's it. You know, no, it, it goes back and forth. And it's a great way for the game master to uh, bring in some story hooks for the, uh, uh, for the character. All right. So again, I rolled a 73, got Elite Militia. These were the apprenticeship options, as you see right here. And I picked Mechanic. So what's next? Now we start taking the skills. And now is when I'm going to bounce back and forth uh, with the book. So. Hand-to-hand -hand expert, and I will show you that in a moment. We'll do that after I go through all these. So I took hand-to-hand -hand expert, and that gives me four attacks, plus two to pull punch, and plus two to roll with punch fall impact. I took weapon proficiency knife, which at first level, that's all oh, that plus one to parry is just the first level, uh, gives me plus one to parry. I took weapon proficiency semi-automatic pistol and heavy military weapons. You'll see why in a little bit. Now, I didn't put the bonuses there because the bonuses are part of the combat section and it really depends on what you're trying to do. But by having a weapon proficiency in semi-automatic pistol, I get a plus or uh, heavy military weapons. I get plus three to, to an aim shot, which basically means every time I pull the trigger, as long as it's not burst fire. I get plus three to burst fire and no penalty if doing uh, was it wild. I think it's wildfire. OK, uh, so excuse me. So that, that's really what it is. Now, with the assault rifle that I have, it just means I get no penalty. 
You see the skill in the upper upper right there? That is a skill in the game, and we're going to talk about that. I have the baseball skill, and my position was batter. Now, I get a 60 plus 4%, so 64% ability to bat a baseball, I guess. But here's what it gives me. A plus 3 to strike with a bat, and the bat does 2d4 plus 2 damage. If you play Palladium outside the superhero realm, you're going to say, what? That's a nice little chunk of damage there. I mean, it's a maximum of 10, but still, we're not talking superheroes here. Plus 3 to strike is no joke, and that goes up with levels. You're like, baseball batter? Where did that come from? Well, after I talk about athletics and scuba, I will show you. So, I also took athletics. That gives me a plus one to parry and dodge, plus one to roll, punch, fall, impact. These are all cumulative. Again, I will show you at the end how all this stacks together. Plus one to physical strength. Well, there we go. Now we notched up the strength a little bit. Plus 1d4 to speed, which I rolled a three. And plus 1d8 to STC, which I rolled a one. Go figure. By the way, my personal house rule... When it comes to things like hit points in Dungeons and Dragons or SDC in uh, in a Palladium game, I have a reroll method. I did not use it here because it's not by the book, but I personally have a reroll method. If you roll a D4, you take what you get. If you roll a D6, you reroll ones. If you roll a D8, you reroll ones and twos. If you roll a D10, you reroll one twos and threes. If you roll a D12, you reroll one twos, threes, and fours. That's a personal house rule. I do that in almost any game that has hit points, variable hit points based on those kind of dice. Finally, I took scuba underwater swimming. I had to take it here because this is a uh, you can't take it as a secondary skill. I'm a duck. Remember this. I'm a duck. And again, you're going to see all these skills later on. But to just to remind you, I'm a duck, and I figured this made sense. Now let's look at F11 out of here. Uh, at F11, the wrong thing. <laughs> Go back to that. F11 out of here. Uh, scroll back to that. Now, let's look. Uh, what pages were those? Those were 148, 58, and 49. So let's start with 148. Not 1478. Oh, apparently, I did that wrong. Hand-to-hand hmm. -hand combat. Expert. Let's zoom in on this bad boy. Hand-to-hand -hand expert. This fighting style... Hopefully, it's big enough for you to read. This fighting style is often taught to soldiers, bodyguards, thieves, and anyone else who... Be expected to live by violence. While it lacks the mastery of martial arts, an expert fighter knows how to scrap quickly and efficiently. At high levels especially, those with this skill often can often hold their own against dedicated masters of the martial. All bonuses are cumulative. And this is where I got my plus two to pull punch, my plus two to roll pull, uh, punch fly in fact. So we already said that. But later on, I'll get plus three to parry dodge at level three, plus two to strike, and that's across the board for hand-to-hand -hand skills. Okay, plus one attack at level four. That's great. So I'll have five attacks per round. And you can see uh, right now, kick attack does a D4 damage at level five. It will do a D6 damage. Critical strike on a roll of 18, 19, or 20. You see how this goes. I'm not going to read the entire chart off to you, but, uh, but you get uh, how that's going on here. So that, that was given to me just from having, uh, what was that called? Uh, hand, uh, elite Militia. There we go. Now, the other one I want to show is weapon proficiency knife because I want to show you how the weapon proficiency go. What page is that? 58. So that was at the bottom, if I remember correctly. I was wrong. Wait a minute. Oh, did I not put the right page in there? Dang it. Well, slide fail. Weapon proficiency knife. Here we go. Oh, mate, there might be book. Yeah, it's book page 58. The PDF is one page off. Got it. So combat skill with all types of knives. Why did I pick knives? Because it seemed to make sense. Two reasons. I'm a soldier. I've got a knife. I'm going to be using that utility knife for many different things. I should probably know how to fight with it as well, right? That's number one. Number two, remember when I took underwater swimming? I know it said scuba, but it also said underwater swimming. You've seen those tropes with the person with the knife in his mouth, and he's diving in the water, and he's swimming, he's swimming with the knife in his mouth? I pictured that as well with the character, so it just made sense to have that knife. I have a knife in my duck bill as I'm swimming, swimming down, uh, you know, into deep water. So you get plus one to strike at levels uh, at level two. Uh oh, 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 that's right. It was parry. So I don't get a plus one to strike until level two, but I do get a plus one to parry at level one, three, six, nine, twelve, and plus one to strike at two, four, seven, ten, 
be so. By the time I get to 13, I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 5 to strike. Pretty much means I can't miss. The person has to dodge. Because a 5 is the target number to hit in Palladium. And finally, let's look at baseball. We're going to spend a little bit of time on baseball. Because you have to know what's going on here. When I saw this, I was like, wait, what? And then when I read it, I was like, okay, a bit cartoony. But I think it fits my character. So I zoom in one more time on this. There we go. In the world of After the Bomb, baseball has become more than a popular sport. Baseball is known as the game, the life, and the way. Its umpires are holy travelers throughout the year, and baseball players are stars for whoop, brief four weeks during the playoff for the pennant and demigods during the final week of the national championship. The National League is usually known as the Empire League, while the American League is everyone else. Is duckbill like a fingernail or a bone? I, I don't, it's like a duckbill. <laughs> I don't know, whatever a duck actually has for a bill. Uh, baseball is the way, there you go. Now, there are three different kinds of bonuses in baseball, so the players should select each, or either pitcher, batter, or base player slash fielder. Taking a skill in baseball more than once allows a player to be more of an all-around player and allows for another bonus. Uh, no, I'm going to keep reading before I say the next part. <laughs> the maximum times a character can take baseball skill is three times, in which case the character would be a talented pitcher, batter, and baseball fielder. Okay. And then it goes into a little anecdote there. So pitchers get this, batters get that, and base players, fielders get this. So I took batter. So I get plus one to bat at first level. An additional plus one at levels three, six, eight, ten, twelve. The batter's best attribute is usually physical strength, which obviously I don't have a high one, but I kind of took care of that a little bit. But some batters rely more on physical prowess. Depending on the other attributes, great batters are either catchers or fielders. I did not take a second one. And again, this is I, I, I wound this into my character's backstory, if you want to call it that. Catchers are often... Slower, older, but definitely wiser players with a good mix of physical prowess and physical strength. Here we go. A batter can use his tool of the game as a blunt weapon and is plus three to strike and parry with a baseball bat. It does 2d4 plus two damage plus any physical strength damage uh, for higher than 15. Guess what I took as my <laughs> non-weapon proficiency ancient? I took blunt. And you'll see that. And this is why. Yep. I have Negan. Well, what's a, what, what was Negan's baseball bat called? <laughs> I'm going to go Negan, you. Uh, so, part of what I did with my characters now, uh, let me go back to this here. We'll full screen this bad boy again. I took this as my elite militia skill, not as a secondary skill. And if you know how these skills work in Palladium, this is a professional level skill. I played baseball seriously. Wasn't the best fielder. Wasn't, I wasn't a pitcher. Pretty decent batter. I probably didn't make the major leagues or the equivalent thereof. I was probably, you know, double A, triple A ball. I don't know. But this is a professional level skill. I was serious about this growing up. I, you know, maybe I joined the militia squad as we were going from town to town. We played baseball games. I don't know. But this is not a secondary skill where I just kind of played with my friends or joined a softball league. And so I'm wrapping this into... Oh, by the way, are you now getting the other reason why he's called Dodger? <laughs> like, there's, like I said, there's more than one reason he was called Dodger. Uh, so anyway, so uh, like I was saying, I, I just kind of wrapped that in. And while that is a funny little, like, uh, cartoony thing about to, after the bomb, I think, you know, people in a Mad Max, because that's how I run my games, kind of, not, not crazy Mad Max, but Mad Max-ish, Terra Firma-ish, if you want to, or Terra Nova, sorry, Terra Nova-ish, if you want to go that route with it. Just a, more of a wild world. I could see them wanting to have some sort of pastime, having have some sort of, let's, let's show that we have civilization. All right. Now, let's go on to our next set of skills, because we're not done yet. And these are just the elite militia skills. I took wrestling. Why? Because I couldn't take it as a secondary skill. So I took it here. So what does it do? It allows me to pin incapacitate at 18 to 20. Body block tackle for a D4 damage plus knockdown. 
another one to roll with punch fall impact plus two to physical strength well now there we go now we're bumping it up a little bit more god i hope i did all the math right on this at the end i had nobody look over my character and plus one more to physical endurance. That's going to help my hit points. And I rolled 46 on my SDC, and I got a perfectly average, literally a 4 4 3, three <laughs> uh, for 14 more SDC. Not bad when you consider I started with 30. Got 10 from Elite Militia, 14 from here. I've almost doubled it. Navigation. Why would I take navigation? Well, there's a little note here. But we'll get back to that. I have 85% navigation. Remember when it said I'm a migratory bird? I felt that it made sense. And I can hear my wife's TV, so I hope you can't. Or not TV, but uh, her streaming, so I hope you can't. <laughs> um, so, but I have 80, so anyway, 85% to, to being a migratory animal. And I took blacksmith here because, again, it's one of those things I couldn't take elsewhere. So it's not named Duck Dodgers, no. It's just. His, I'll get to his real name. I remember I rolled up his real name out of here. I'm not happy with it, but you know what? Everything's random when we do this. Uh, but he goes by the call sign Dodger. I, I, I work for the Air Force and like all the pilots have call signs. So this guy's call sign is Dodger. You want to find it? Yes, I want to find my way back home. <laughs> there you go. Uh, remember this internal compass thing for later. Now here are my secondary skills. I took bodybuilding because I can. Another plus two to physical strength. Another plus 10 to uh, SDC. So, we're now over doubling my SDC. Locate secret compartments and doors. Now, this probably doesn't make sense to you. Why would you take this now? I will explain that. Well, if I don't explain it later, when it goes to my apprentice skills under mechanics, just, just think of it as blending in with that, okay? This person understands blueprints. This person understands how to build buildings. This person can understand uh, how things are constructed. It just kind of made sense to me. Weapon proficiency blunt, again. Now, just blunt gives plus one to strike at level one. But remember, I get plus three on top of that if I'm using a baseball bat, so I get plus four to strike. Real name is not Howard. <laughs> uh, I took swimming. Now, why did I take swimming here? Because, well, it's a secondary skill. I needed to take swimming in order to have one of my powers that I'm going to show you later. But I didn't have to waste a real skill for it when I could use other ones that I couldn't take as secondary skills and, and put that in place. So I took that as a, uh, took swimming here because you have to have swimming in order to have underwater swimming. Right there. Oops, did I say, oh, I was going to look, why was I going to look at wrestling? I don't know why I was going to look at wrestling. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip that. And then I took first aid because, you know what, you're in the military and you learn self-aid buddy care. Now, I get it. You're going to say, but it's secondary skill. You kind of learned it on your own. Yeah, you know what, I took my one hour of self-aid buddy care every year, and here we go. Now we go into the apprenticeship skills. We're not done yet. We have all these apprenticeship skills to have. So what is an apprenticeship? Well, let's look at what the mechanic apprenticeship is. The village master mechanic has to be able to deal with repairing everything from an 1857 steam-powered mechanical thresher to a 1957 internal combustion Ford truck to a 2057 fuel cell electric commuter bus. If it breaks, it needs fixing. If it needs a part, then the part has to be found, installed, and repaired. Uh, or made from scratch. If the community needs another one, then the mechanic may just have to build a duplicate from scratch. This is a universal type mechanic. And when you see the skills that I took, it might start making sense as to why I put this all together with Elite Militia. I work in the, uh, uh, what do they used to call it? Uh, well, Transportation Squadron for me, but I, but I work in, the, in, 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 I'm a mechanic. I'm civil engineering to some degree. In eight years of training, the character learns how machinery is designed, operated, built, and maintained. Characters can attempt to redesign, modify, sabotage, repair, or construct mechanical devices. With this training, it is possible to put abandoned factories, mines, loading docks, railroad trains, and other sophisticated industrial plants back into operation in a time frame ranging from 3 to 6 days for small plants to 46 months for huge facilities. Remember, it's a post-apocalyptic world. People are going to want somebody who can build things, who can fix things. Things are breaking down all over the place. Motor pool, there you go. Motor pool is the word I was looking for. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, as a se right, a secondary skill it lacks, but again, scholastic skills and after the bomb work a little differently. So, well, I mean, they work the same, but you get them based on this right here. Here's where all my scholastic skills are coming from. Main skill, well, actually, let's look at, let's start the penalties first. Mechanical penalties. Minus 25% when they're insufficient parts and materials, so you're basically jury rigging or just trying to, like, you know what, I don't, I don't have... I can't make it work. You're MacGyvering things. So I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of bubble gum and duct tape and a paper clip and try to make it go. Uh, and 15% for rush jobs when forced to use inadequate tools. So this is your under duress. I'm a little annoyed by this. Only because I feel you shouldn't be rolling dice except for when you're under duress. Like this, the mechanical, uh, the this mechanic apprenticeship, I should be able to build whatever I want given enough time. I got 10 years, I should be able to build a car without having to make a roll. You know, it's simply because, you know, that's, again, you're, you're not under any, any duress, you're just going through it, you're fixing, you mix and matching. So I kind of don't like the idea of minus 15 for a rush job, but I would say that this minus 15% is for a rush job that's above and beyond normal. Like, hey, uh, I can get this done for you in a week. You got two days. Ah, crap! You know, something like that. Uh, keep scrolling. Keep wanting to scroll down here. My main skill is mechanical engineering. Now that comes with some prerequisites that you must have. Uh, Kevin Sullivan says yes. Fixing a truck back in the '40s is not the same as fixing a truck while under fire. Right? Exactly. Uh, so core skills. Those are like your OCC skills. Basic mathematics. Blacks. Uh oh. Did I take blacksmith twice? I might have just found an error. I may have just taken blacksmith twice, which means I have a uh, another skill to... Uh, this is what happens when somebody doesn't look over the character for you in a Palladium game. We'll, we'll look, but I think I did. I think I took blacksmith twice. Which technically is possible, by the way. Uh, electronics basic. Again, I do not like how this is written here. Electronics basic and mechanics basic, you see? looks it makes sense right now, right? But that's not how the skill is listed in the dang book uh general repair and maintenance that's a new skill and we're going to look over that one that's a new skill that's not in any of the other games locksmith liter literacy there we go literacy i can speak i am not literate apparently mechanics automobile plumbing that's a new one also radio basic communications all get plus 15 percent bonus then i get some military skills recognize weapon quality and select two others, and we'll see which ones I took. Well, actually, we'll see them right here. I took Demolitions and Demolitions Disposal. Going back to the Elite Militia thing, I could have taken Camouflage, I could have taken Optic Systems, Laser Systems, that's fine, but I felt as, an, as some sort of engineer that Demolitions taking buildings down and Demolitions Disposal as the, uh, as the group, as the thing that I can do for my party. Now imagine this. There's an underwater mine. It is about to cause a tidal wave. Maybe not a huge one, but a big enough one. I have underwater swimming. I'm diving down there. I'm going to go. I got my, uh, my knife in my bill, and I'm swimming under that water with my, my arms and wings. And I'm diving down there, and I'm going to stop that mine or torpedo or whatever. Now my character has purpose. And pilot skills. You get automobile, construction, and farming equipment, truck and any three others, and we'll see what they are in a moment. So, starting off with the main skill, mechanical engineering. I get 45. It's a 45 base, as you can see right here, plus 5 per level of experience. I'm level 1, and I get a 20% bonus to that. I have no IQ bonus to add on to this. So, 70%, which for a first level character, I'll take it. I did not take surveillance systems. You could have got a plus 5% if you would have taken it. Doesn't fit the, the way I vision the character, but I did take Locksmith, as you'll see, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, the expanded skill list and After the Bomb is really good. I like it. I think it fits a post-apocalyptic setting very well. Now, here are the core skills. I, and you can see how I did The way I did the order of operations here is uh, it's the base plus the level modifier Plus my OC, I'm oh, sorry, my uh, apprenticeship bonus. So ma basic mathematics starts at 83%, blacksmith at 60%. Okay, I got to look now. Yeah, <laughs> I did take it twice. 
You know what the difference between these two is? Because this is a considered a professional level skill, and this is considered a, uh, a secondary skill. Even though this percentage is higher, the quality of work for this one would oops for this one would be better. Anyway, um, well, I'll uh, I'll have to replace. This secondary, uh, this uh, militia skill is something else. Unless, oh, wait a second. Did it just come with elite militia? Or did I choose this? Doesn't matter at this point. I'm just going to move on. If it came with it automatically, there's nothing I can do. If it didn't come with it automatically, if I chose it, then I, I would replace it at some point. All right, let's get back to what we're talking about here. Yes, there are um, gunsmithing. I'd have to look it up, but I think you're right. I think there, uh, there uh, are rules for gunsmithing in this book. So electron general repair and maintenance. We're going to take a look at that one because that's new to here. Uh, locksmith. Now, here we go. I took the locksmith. So it started at only 25%, but I get plus five per level, plus 15 for the, the apprenticeship. I keep on to say OCC and plus five, as I wrote down here, from the mechanical engineer ability. So I get a 50% chance to locksmith. So that's good. Literacy at 50%. <laughs> I'm about as literate as I am here. Mechanics basic. The reason I have, the, I want to look at that one along with general repair and maintenance is, well, what's the difference? Why do we have mechanics basic and general repair and maintenance? Wouldn't that be the same thing? I would say in most Palladium games, yes, but not in this one. And we'll get into why in a little bit. And then plumbing. Well, again, if I have general repair and maintenance and I have mechanics basic, but why do I need plumbing? Why, why are we getting so nuanced here? Again, there is a reason for it. So let's look at what those reasons are. 57 and 44. So what is that? Let's do 44 first. Uh, general repair and maintenance. Not everyone can be a blacksmith, mechanic, or carpenter, but many are good. By the way, this this is like your handyman, which, by the way, I added when I did my Palladium spinoff before I even knew this was in the game. Uh, but with their hands uh, and capable of doing satisfactory repairs on simple mechanisms, gears, pulleys, wheels, and so on. Change oil, spark plugs, grease motor parts, take apart and put back together most simple machines and unclog clean pipes, gears, and mechanisms. Again, this is your general handyman. The person who likes to tinker with his car in the garage, the person who, you know, puts up the drywall and changes the electrical outlets in the house, you know, just, just the general, uh, you know, repair maintenance type stuff. Includes sharpening blades, sewing tears and sails, nets and clothes. And I like this list here because it helps you kind of think outside the box because who would have thought about this outside of me, like a tailor, you have to be a tailor for that. No, this is general repairs and maintenance which includes uh, sewing tears and sails, nets and clothes. It may not look pretty, but does the job. Replacing wheels, changing washers, caulking, repairing furniture, painting, varnishing, basic woodwork, and building any simple mechanism or do it yourself by following directions. Even if doing, uh, even doing minor patchwork on armor. So you can restore 2d6. The character can also assist a mechanic or carpenter and maintain machines after being shown how. Again, General maintenance. Roll once to see whether the character can figure out what is broken, what must be done to fix it, and whether it's beyond his meager abilities. Roll again to determine the success or failure. So very much like medical. Roll to diagnose. Roll to repair. If failure, the player may try again, but only once. Another fail ro failed roll means he can't fix or work on it. All right, so uh, what were the other pages? 57. So for here, it's 58. And what did I say we were going to look at? Mechanics basic and plumbing. Mechanics basic. So what's different between that and what we just looked at? Mechanics basic. This is a rudimentary understanding of how machinery operates. Sounds like the other one. This person can repair and maintain simple mechanisms and basic motorcycles and automobiles. Okay, so now we're getting into automotive mechanics, which, by the way, is an actual skill also. Uh, it's minus 15 because this isn't an automotive mechanic. Minus 15 to work on trucks, minus 40 to work on military vehicles, and minus 70 to work on aircraft. Which I don't even have that capability, so I couldn't work on aircraft at all. At least not with this skill. All right. What's different? The other one's a general fix up. This one includes the ability to actually repair, maintain, and to some degree create. I know it doesn't say it here, but. That, that's really what the difference between this isn't mechanical engineering. We'll get to that. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to talk about that. Mechanical engineering goes into the true design of sophisticated machines, but simple machines you can create. So the, the main difference between the two is this one gives you a little bit better understanding of 
and especially if you read the other Palladium books, which you should not have to do, but you can understand blueprints. The, the other one's about the handyman. This one's more uh, like we'll call it the scientific side of it to some degree. All right. Yes, there you go. It's practical versus theory. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Raven Slayer says, okay, let's be real here. If you're a male who reads instruction manuals, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> My wife yells at me about that all the time. So Kevin Sullivan says, I know many people under 40 who can't do simple anything. Can't change a tire, change oil, replace a light switch. I can't replace a light switch. Well, yes, I can. But I over, I, I'm, I'm actually afraid of electricity. I know it might sound weird. When, when uh, I had a guy come in to look at our, uh, a wall outlet he didn't even turn the power off see i could have done it by turning the power off i didn't know what was going on though i thought i actually had to shorten the wire going all the way through and i didn't want to take my stupid monitor uh, let somebody that i'll pay somebody to do that i don't care um as far as changing oil in my car i know how to do it but i haven't done it since i was like 14 or 15 years old i don't want to do it changing a tire i can i can do that again i hate it barely replace light bulbs i'll fall off the ladder Uh, no, no, Nerdy Ogre, he wasn't complaining about the game. <laughs> he was just saying, ah, if you're a man who looks at it. So, uh, I've known Raven's Lair for a long, long time. I, he's just messing around with people. It's all good. Uh, now we're going to look at plumbing. Oh, it's right there. Plumbing. The character is a qualified plumber. How is this different than general maintenance again? Able to diagnose and repair water or sewage systems. Okay, well, couldn't I get that under the general maintenance? Well, maybe the sewage systems would be too much. I don't know. That's up to your game master. Including toilet sinks, showers, and bathtubs. Again, that should be under the general maintenance. Sprinkler systems and septic tanks. Yeah, it might go outside. But here's where it really shines. This is where it's different than the general maintenance. Also includes all the skills necessary for installing plumbing in a new or refurbished building, as well as repairing water towers, community water systems, and sewage or drainage systems. Well, that is well outside the scope of general maintenance. And a little side note here, when I was getting out of the Air Force, I had to go through a blind, I was like, hey, do you want to go through this blind uh, study? Or uh, I, think it was, I don't know what it was. It was a blind study, we'll just call it. Nobody knew what it was. All we knew is that we were going to be, somebody was going to talk to us about something interesting. And what the something interesting was, was plumbing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it opened my eyes. When I thought plumber, I thought of Johnny Asscrack fixing my toilet. No. No, it went into the pressures needed for multi-story buildings, the math involved with it. Like, actually, how, how much knowledge you have to have to be a true on, uh, like, a uh, plumbing engineer. I don't know if that's, if that's the right term. I was like, wow, that's actually pretty intense. So, uh, kids, anybody says, well, you want to be a plumber? Say yes. They get paid well also. All right. Um, so those were the three that... Uh, that I uh, really wanted to look into there. The rest of them are, you know, are common palladium uh, skills. And uh, let's go back to our slideshow. Military and pilot skills. Okay, so if you remember back uh, we, in, in the apprentice, the mechanic apprenticeship, I call these one called OCC, um, we had military and pilot skills. So recognize weapon quality, demolitions, demolitions disposal. Remember, I took those because. I leaned that back towards my military type training. I was I was raised in the compound and I'm a good mechanic. So you know what? I can I can go try to take down some buildings that need it, or I can stop buildings from being taken down that don't need it. Remember, just visualize that. Visualize the duck diving underwater, water plumes and bubbles floating behind him as he's going down trying to stop the bomb from going off. I, I love that view. So and you, if you want to, you can do I'll go all Donald Duck with it as well. Just a shirt, no pants. I don't care. That's up to you. <laughs> all right. Other skills are automobile, construction, farming equipment. You see my percentages here. Hello, MP Watts. How you doing? Visualize Rambo Duck. I'm not that cool. I'm not that cool as Rambo Duck. Uh, yes, Darth Theak, you're right. Good plumbers can make bank. Do not disparage the blue collar trades. I'm going to tell you right now. I will hug my garbage man because he's doing a job I don't want to do. I don't disparage him. The plumber, the handyman, the car mechanic. Yeah, they're dirty because they work on dirty stuff that you're not working on. Appreciate them. I've got truck, aircraft mechanics, read sensory equipment. Now that's going to come in in a little bit. And vehicle weapon systems. 
Uh-oh. So, I like that because it gives me plus two to strike if I'm acting as the gunner on a vehicle. So now, because when you look at my attributes, I'm probably not the best fighter. I've got, I'm, I'm decent with a pistol. I can use heavy weapons. We already looked at that. I'm a vehicle gunner. Okay. And I deal with demolitions. Not so great with the assault rifle. I'm not going to be kicking anybody's butt and fisticuffs, you know, with my strength and physical prowess. But I ha definitely have a role on the team. In a squad, you drive, I'll shoot. And we got to go back to page 47 again. Yes, I'm doing this slide by slide so I don't forget. And I think that was here, as a matter of fact. That was the demolitions disposal. So why did I want to look at demolitions disposal? I just wanted to show why it was different. Oh, this is 47. Uh, why it was different than demolitions. That was the main reason. I went to the wrong page. Uh, did I go to the wrong page? That's medical. Military, there we go. Demolitions disposal or explosive ordnance disposal. I am the EOD guy. I'm the one that has to wear the bomb suit when crap happens. This skill enables the character to safely defuse unexploded mines, bombs, explosive booby traps, dud artillery rounds, dud explosive charges, or any other explosive device. I'm going to stop reading there. I do not like this next line because I don't like one chance failures in games. With that said, that's the way it works. <laughs> I've got a 60% chance plus three per level. Actually, what's my percent chance? Well, a 68% chance. Uh, a failed roll means the item explodes without warning. I would like that to be a critical failure does that, and a normal failure gives you one more chance. But, you know what? When you're EOD, things are dangerous. Or, it explodes, but you have one opportunity to get out of the way. Maybe with a pretty insane PP roll or something. I don't know. Physical prowess. But, anyway, this is what the rules in the game say. So, be careful. I better get paid well in this militia if this is my job. <laughs> I'm going to put that on the screen. No one should look down on service people. It's because of them people get to live their life in comfort. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, now, let's get back to what we were looking at. Slideshow that thing. Step four. All right. Those are our skill lists, and you will see a complete skill list at the end. Now we're going to spend our BIOE points. This is where this game differs from the other Palladium games. We covered it just a small bit in Heroes Unlimited, and we talked about mutant animals last week as a whole. But now we're going to actually spend them and see how they're put together. I did not put the duck up here, so I'm going to actually do... Uh, well, no, we're, we're going to get to the duck in a moment so you can see all the options. We will look at all of these. But this is how we did it. The duck starts with 75 bio E points. Biological energy points, all right? So I increase the size from three to six. That costs 15 bio points. It's five points per increase. So I'm now down to 60. And it gave me a, be a base SDC, structural damage capacity, of 30. Hands. There are different ways you can do hands with a bird. You can have hands that are separate from the wings. You can have hands that are part of the wings, which is what I did because it costs less points. You can have partial hands. And you can have no hands, and you just got wings, and you are really weird. <laughs> I guess you have to do everything with your bill. Um, 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 um. <laughs> Whatever. But I went with full, but on the wings, because it costs less points. I am not a six-foot duck. I am not quite that tall. But uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll look at those. Uh, we get to that. That's actually at the end, though. But I'm, I'm size category six, and I'm going to show that on page 21. And you'll see my rolls and so forth as well. Uh, I went biped full, but that's automatic. So I didn't have to pay any points for that. So I'm still at 50. I'm sorry, hands, hands full and wings cost 10 bio points. So I'm down to 50. This was cost me zero. So I'm still at 50. Speech full. I considered being annoying little Donald Duck jerkwad and uh, <laughs> going five, but I wouldn't be able to role play that right. And it just wouldn't, you know, I don't, I don't want to just say, well, my, my duck's hard to understand, but uh, I'm saying blah, 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 because then you're really not getting the negative of the, of the, uh, uh, the actual, what are these called? Uh, humanoid trait. Also, in my games, you have to have hands full, biped full, speech full. You must in my games when I'm running the game. 
look and you must have looks none and i went with that because i didn't want to spend the points on that anyway i like being a duck now what kind of powers did i take well the first one i took is float and we're going to look at these i think uh in, in a little bit floating allows me to actually fall asleep on water and not drown floating allows me to land on water and not drown <laughs> like so I'm at home. I'm a duck. I'm at home in the water. So that was only five bio points. So I went with that. I have insulating feathers. Yes, there's more in there. Uh, we'll look at that. What this does is it insulates me from the cold. And when we look at that, you're going to see, I think I, I uh, was it how's my say or how's my damage or something from cold. We'll, we'll look at it for five bio points, cold, wet, rain, snow, et cetera, et cetera. I'm protected from that. And it gave me eight more SDC. I was like, yeah, I got to take that. It only cost five bio points. I'll take that. Soaring flight. I finally looked up the flights. You know, last week, you guys remember, I didn't know what the different flights were. Well, I know what they are now. And I took soaring flight. Now, it cost me 20 bio points for that. So I'm down to 10. But the reason I took that is remember when I went back and I had navigation and I'm a migratory bird? Well, it makes sense. Also, think about it this way. Hey, Dodger. We're out here in the front. We need you to get here quickly. We got some ordinance that needs to be taken care of. I can now fly there. I don't have to try to find somebody with a jet or take a truck through enemy territory or whatever. I can fly higher than anybody else with soaring flight, which we'll look at. And I can fly for my physical endurance hours, which I think my physical endurance was what, 14, 15? I can fly for 15 hours at 120 miles per hour. How would I not take this? I'm a migratory bird. I can fly into any, any area. Now, uh, a raptor flight, uh, a bird with raptor flight can mess me up. <laughs> you know, but that's their job. But uh, anyway, that, just that capability to fly in, do my job, and fly out. Again, get a visual of this character. UD maintenance worker. Hey, we've got a problem. We entered the plant. It's got red. It's got a red alarm going, eh, 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 and it's counting down from a hundred. Get your butt over here! Oh crap! So, um, I know I'm missing some of chat here. Uh, Max, I would choose telepathy with ducks since the bill fix shape can't make most sounds. Uh, well, with speech full, yes, I can. And I don't like psionics. <laughs> I hate psionics. Uh, I, I, heathen dog's okay with it but uh, yeah uh, he's trying to get me to open my mind to allow psionics in games I actually considered taking a psionic with this character but I couldn't bring myself to do it and the one psionic I would take came with such a drawback I was like that's dumb but uh, again your game might vary if that's what you want to do in your game but with speech full I have the ability to talk completely well like a human um, okay now, internal compass, this gave me the plus 30 to navigation. We're going to look specifically what it does a little bit, but I always know where true north is. And it gives me 30% to navigation. Great, I got to get there. Where are you? We're here. Okay, I can make it there. I know where it is on a map. I can get there. <clears throat> yeah, I can use a phone. <laughs> and I took hold breath, which we'll look at also. And why did I take hold breath? Again, I've got underwater diving. I'm a duck with insulating feathers. I'm diving underground. I don't need some stupid scuba suit. I'm going to swim down there and I can hold my breath. And now I'm down. Oh, that cost five. This should say zero. Slide mistake. That should say zero. I spent them all. So uh, here, I'll, 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 do, I'll do this for you. Here, I'm at zero. <laughs> Hey, what happened? Oh, that's right. I'm used to PowerPoint where F5 makes you go. <laughs> I just refreshed the page. Okay, so there we are. So let's look at what these do. Let's start with uh, page 21. Let's look at our size chart. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. Why do I need to look at page 21? Because I think I put it right here. Yeah, I put the chart right here. So I was size level six, right? Oh, let's make that back to full screen. We'll go back and look at those skills in a moment. So I'm size level six. The reason I pick size level six, now don't get me wrong. I don't do this with every character. I've had characters at size level 10. I've had characters at size level three. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. This is just my baseline. I like it because there are no penalties, no bonuses. 
and I can figure out what else to do with my points. I didn't take any disadvantages, and I will explain why when we look at what those disadvantages are. Every one of those disadvantages wouldn't have been right for this character. But they're not bad disadvantages, and it's actually one of the things that I like that After the Bomb put in this new version of After the Bomb. So I rolled a, a roll up I a size level 6, a duck is medium build, we talked about that before. I rolled 40 plus 66, 27, so I'm 67 pounds, and I'm 4 foot 5. There you go. Yeah, size level 25 is for things like dinosaurs. Uh, after the bomb provides something new at 15 or higher, which is super strength, or whatever the exact technical term of it is. So if you're size level 15 or higher, you get uh, you get that, what's it called in regular platinum? Extraordinary strength or something? Uh, the, the purpose of the scuba skill, so Darth Theix says, uh, well, we can look at it, because I'll show you, because uh, I read it. Purpose of scuba skills uh, is training in scuba equipment. That is absolutely true. As much as anything, correct me if I'm wrong. It also includes the ability to swim deeply. It's called. That's why it has that other moniker on there of uh, of uh, uh, underwater swimming. I don't know if the other versions of Palladium have that, but uh, this one definitely does. And we can look at that. Uh, what page was that on? Where is swimming? Scuba underwater swimming. I copied. This is exactly what it says in the book. Uh, so I can find that it's under the physical skills, if I remember correctly. So, anywho, if we're here, ah, right here. So I want to go to page seventy-two. So let's just uh, come on now. I forgot how to use my computer. <laughs> F eleven. So let's go to seventy-three. Hold breath. I don't know if that's what I was looking at, but that's what we're going to start with. Because there we go. Hold breath. Internal compass soaring. Hold breath. Many of the animals listed can stay underwater for extended periods of time. If it says the animal can hold breath, then the character has that ability. The amount of time an animal can hold breath is 2d6 plus 6 minutes. Average roll of 2d6 is 7, so it's 13 minutes I can hold my breath underwater. The character rolls this just once when first rolling up the character. Oh, I didn't do that. I did not do that. Okay, I didn't, I didn't read that portion of it properly. So let's do that right now. I've got my dice right here. And I rolled a 5 and a 6. Ugh. That's 11. Oh. So that's awesome. So 11, so 17 minutes. I can hold my breath for 17 minutes. I'm going to put that on the sheet right here. Hold breath. I'll just put it right here. 17 minutes. No. Doesn't look nice anymore, but I don't care. So 17 minutes. That was a really good roll. Next, what we're going to look at is, uh, I'll, I'll show it to you, there's no problem, I, and I'm not doing this to be like, ah, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm doing it because if you have that question, somebody else might have that question. Um, internal compass. The character always knows magnetic north, even if lost, and has a very good sense of direction, plus 30 to land navigation, yeah. uh, and plus 15 to the navigation astronomy skills, I didn't take that. Oh. Oh. I made a mistake on the character. See, isn't this great? We're going through this together. This is only to land navigation, not to navigation and uh, not to navigation itself. Well, let's go back and fix that. So where is uh? I didn't take land navigation because I figured I'd be flying more than than driving. Uh, where's my navigation? Navigation. So this is only going to be seventy. All right. Plus 15 from internal compass. That, getting corrected twice on the stream. So, and when we get to the end, when it says 85, we'll just have to remember, remind me to change that to 70. So, look at that. Aren't we glad we read some of this stuff? Uh, extreme magnetic fields, say right next to a huge electrical generator, can sometimes screw up internal compass, but the character will be well aware of this disturbance. And, uh, what, what, uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did take the swimming skill. I took two swimming skills. <laughs> so, yes, you're right. Just because you can hold breath doesn't mean you can swim. But I took two swimming skills, so I'm good. And what was the other one we were going to look at? Uh, 
This is why, and Heathen Dog has said this before as well. It's why you always have somebody else look over your Palladium character. Where was I? Core skills. No, oh, we're in bio points. So 72 soaring. Oh, soaring flight. That's going to be on this side over here. Uh, again, I messed up a page number, so let me find flight. Hibernation. Glide. Flight. Here we go. Basic flight. So basic flight lets you, and we have to look at basic flight because some of this is, uh, crosses over. Basic flight lets you fly. Uh, take off from the ground. Hovering takes one full melee round. So it's 15 seconds to take off and to hover in place. And remember, you're not a hummingbird. <laughs> You know, I'm a 67 pound creature that's trying to, you know, fly off the ground. So just basic flight does that. Takes another full melee round to build an additional 40 miles per hour speed. It's four melee rounds. So that's one minute to reach 120 miles per hour. While flying or hovering up to 20 miles per hour, plus two to dodge, et cetera, et cetera. But let's move on to soaring flight here. The wings of the character are designed for nearly effortless long distance flight and high flying. Same as basic flight, except the character can fly at a constant speed up to 120 miles per hour above hovering, even in just a wide circle for as many hours as the physical endurance. And maximum altitude is 15,000 feet. Okay? So that, that's a, that just made sense for the duck for me, which is why I did that. Uh, what else did we want to look at here? I haven't forgot about the scuba thing. Oh, we want to look. Okay, this is going to be under the duck page when we get to the duck page, which I think I'm doing next. Hold on. Nope, I, I'm not. So let me look at the duck page itself. I think it was 87. Should have put that page on there. Yep, here we go. 87. So here are our options with the duck. I am not. I mean, I guess this could be me, but I'm not that buff. That's for sure. So I showed you the top part. Now, talk about the wings. I didn't want to pay an extra 10 bio points for your extra limbs. We talked about that as well. But let's look at these, uh, these powers that we could have taken. So here's the float one. This is not a swim skill, but the ability to float effortlessly, even while sleeping on the water. Characters with flight will be able to take off directly from the surface of the water. Those with glide or flight can come down in water directly to a floating position, just like a nice little duck does. Does my character go good with orange sauce? What is wrong with you? <laughs> but to be fair, if you roll up a carnivore character, yeah, I probably do. Um, insulating water repellent feathers. Resistant to cold, rain, and snow adds a bonus of plus eight SDC. I'll have to look up what resistance specifically means because that's a term. I took soaring flight and I took hold breath. Now here are the disadvantages. I could have had a vestigial, 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 I don't know, webbed hands and feet, reptile brain prey. I really did consider this, but I was like, it just wouldn't make sense. I couldn't be EOD and have hand-to-hand -hand expert and justify this in my brain. I just couldn't. And I could have no wings or wings that don't work, little nubs, or no wings or tail at all. And I was like, that just doesn't fit. I'm not saying that nobody should do that. I'm saying the, the concept I had for this character, that just wouldn't, wouldn't fit. So, um, now we want to look up scuba. That's going to be in the skills. So let me see what page skills are on again. Approximately 47. So we'll just physical. Because if I remember correctly, scuba is under physical. Swimming. Yep. Swimming and fatigue notes. We didn't get that. Swimming advanced. Scuba underwater swimming. Reason I didn't take swimming advanced is because that's just above water stuff and I wanted to dive. The letters scuba stand for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Characters learns methods of skin diving and underwater swimming. And use of oxygen tanks, apparatus, mask, and flippers. So it's both. It's both scuba and swimming underwater. I can hold my breath for 17 minutes. I can I can dive down pretty far. Now, if I want to be down for a half hour or if I want to go so far that I'm going to start getting the bends and so forth, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try to find a, a helmet that can go over my bill. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. 
How is webbed hands and feet a disadvantage? Well, good question. Let's look it up since you're asking the question on the stream. Um, I forgot. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me see where the traits are again because it'll be around that page 72. This, okay, so. Uh, do, 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 do. Hooves, horns. Domestication, nearsighted, ears, nocturnal, prey eyes, reptile brain, reptile brain, tail, webbed hands, feet. Here we go. The character has large amounts of webbing between his fingers and between his toes. This makes, uh, this makes many different uh, movements awkward from running. Reduce the speed attribute and leaping distance by 20. So you, you waddle around like Donald Duck. To manipulating small objects, minus 5% on skills requiring manual dexterity. That would be bad when I'm trying to disarm a bomb. Reduce running speed by 20. When used in water, webbing allows much faster swimming. Increase the speed by 30%. And while you could say that could fit your character, I'm not just a waterborne fowl. Like, as in, I, I'm not only... I, I, didn't, I didn't work for the Navy. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, reduce physical beauty attribute by 10%, at least one point. Oh, and the character is minus 20 to disguise and is great difficulty passing for human, impossible up close. Well, I mean, I, I already have looks none anyway, so that's not an issue. So that's why. That, that makes and that makes sense to me. That makes sense. Okay, let's get back to our character here. Hopefully I explain again. Um, there's a lot more to talk about, but we're not going to go into everything here. I just want to show what was going on with this character. Obviously, if you're making a cat, if you're making a dog, if you're making a zebra, you know, whatever, you're going to have different options available to you. I'm glad I got the bird option. Because I, and I've been known to not allow birds in my game. I really have. Uh, and it's because people take advantage of the fact that I'm just going to hover and fire. I know it's a lame excuse, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's how do I say this. I don't want to automatically duck hunt you out of the sky, and that's the option I have to take if you're going to do that. <laughs> All right, SDC and hit points. I have 18 total hit points. Why? Because I have physical endurance of 13, but it wasn't 13 before. Trust me, it's 13. And I rolled five on my D6. No, 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 no. I, then I would have lost. I would have lost other things I needed. I'm okay with my wings and hands being the same. Remember, I'm not, I'm not a hover fighter. I'm not, I'm not a, a C-130 gunner. My job is to get in, defuse something, or fly into a situation uh, where there's some maintenance that needs to be done, maybe get a vehicle overhauled, and get the heck out. Okay, hovering, it says, it says for both basic flight, you can hover. It just takes a turn, uh, sorry, uh, one melee round to do it with basic flight, and I can do it instantly as a... Uh, uh, as a uh, uh, soaring flight. Glide is something separate from flight, but glide isn't nearly as cool. Take glide if you're a squirrel, not if you're a bird. Yeah, duck hunter. There you go. <laughs> uh, I've, I've actually done that to birds in the party, and they got so angry at me. I'm like, dude, every single time you fly up over the canopy, <laughs> you're wide open. Boom! Like, what do you want? <laughs> you have no cover. So... Well, I should have a bonus because I paid this bio points for flying. Yeah, you know what your bonus is? You can fly. <laughs> so anyway, so SDC, 73. Remember, I started with 30. Then I had eight for the insulating feathers, 10 for being elite militia, one because I rolled poorly for athletics. Oh, no, no, that came with athletics. I'm sorry. Uh, one for athletics, 14 from wrestling and 10 from bodybuilding for a total of 73. Not bad. Not bad. You don't need the skill hunting to shoot somebody out of the sky. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you can only shoot ducks with a shotgun. <laughs> now, there is acrobatic flight. That is a type of flight. It costs a ton of bio points, but if you take it, you are very difficult to hit. Here. Alignment. I picked Scrupulous because I felt that this character was, you know, he might not be principled, but at the, uh, at the end of the day, this character wants to see the world come back. 
And, and if you know anything about Heathen Dog and I, we believe in playing good characters in games that are meant to have good characters play in them. And this isn't after the, you know, a post-apocalyptic type setting. You're trying to rebuild society in some way. I played baseball for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I figured that being a generally good person was the way to go i'm going i'm trying to defuse bombs i'm going to help my brothers out in the militia uh, i'm there to see you know people survive and by people i mean mutant animals humans well we'll see they got to earn my trust a little bit. right Marhawk, when you're absolutely right uh so but what, what this character or this player kept thinking is that flight was going to be a complete advantage for him all over the place. Like, he should be able to fly over everybody and just see 130 down with nobody able to shoot back. But there should be penalties. Why? Your friends are hiding behind trees. Your friends are using foxholes. You're flying in the free and clear. Oh, look at that. You didn't even say that you were flying in the sunlight like, you know, they like to do in, in uh, aircraft uh, dogfighting. You just said that you're hovering above shooting down. <laughs> uh, scrupulous characters value life and freedom above all else and despise those who deprive others of them this type of hero is typically portrayed in many clint eastwood and charles bronson films the character who is forced to work beyond the law yet battles for justice or vengeance and the greater good of the people they're not usually vicious or vindictive characters but are individuals driven by injustice to right a wrong or take a bloody stand these characters will always attempt to work within the law whenever possible. Now, what are some things about being scrupulous? This, my character will keep his word to any other good person. Now, there's no no alignment. Well, there really is. But uh, for the sake of this discussion, there's no no alignment. But if you seem like a jackass, or if you seem like an evil person, you know what? I might lie back to you. Because you've been lying to everybody. But generally speaking, I'm going to feel bad about it, and I'm not going to want to go that route. Lie only to people of selfish or evil alignments. Never attack or kill an unarmed foe. Once you give up, you give up. You know, now we got to take you in for processing. Never harm an innocent. I really wish that would say never intentionally harm an innocent. But uh, never torture for pleasure, but may use muscle to extract information from criminals or evil characters. Man, one of the things I really considered was a duck bill that could do extra damage but I couldn't find the bio points for it, and I didn't want one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, vestigial. The, um, disadvantage, there you go. Letter of your word or the spirit of your word, which one? <laughs> well, uh, I am one of those people that think that a game master that screws with the players because they didn't word the wish spell exactly perfectly, I'm always spirit of the law over the letter of law. I believe in intent. Absolutely believe in intent. Uh, never torture for pleasure. Like you already read that one. Never kill for pleasure. Will always attempt to bring the villain to justice alive, no matter how vile he may find him. Always try to help others. Again, that's kind of a definitive. I don't like the whole always because you know how far does that go? How do I prioritize that list? You know? Attempt to work within the law whenever possible. Bend and occasionally break the law when deemed necessary. This means he may use strong arm techniques, harass, break and enter, steal, and so on. If that's the way to get the ultimate, you know ultimate good accomplished distrust authority and fear the law may not be an effective weapon against injustice and crime now as somebody who's in a militia i i might not necessarily distrust authority like on a, on a micro scale but definitely something like the empire of humanity is a perfect example i may not want a big mutant coalition you know big mutant states of america because that just gets corrupted over time but City states, militias where people are free, I can get with that. <laughs> Attempt to bring in the bad guy, but might trip and hit face on the ground or a tree branch every time you get right. <laughs> uh, work with groups, but dislikes confining laws and bureaucracy. Yeah, let's just get the job done. Forget your rules. Never take dirty money or items. Never, I should, again, I wish I would say intentionally. Never betray a friend. Never participate in cannibalism and finds it repugnant. Cannibalism is a thing in this game. Uh, depending on traits that you have. So, uh, as a scrupulous character, I could not do that. So, here's the final math on everything. Now, we got to fix some of this final math. Oh, these aren't the skills. Never mind. That's, that screen's probably a little bit confusing for you. So, let's look at... Yep. Elizer Dodger Broadhead. I rolled that name up. Leave me alone. 
I rolled the name up. Goes by Dodger. That's his call sign. That's what he goes by. So Dodger, what does he have? These are his final attributes. Remember how those attributes are horrible before? Again, I know somebody is going to say, dude, you could have done so much better. You could have got that physical strength to 17. And why do you have a 15 in IQ? Well, I want to be a foreman. I want to be somebody who is actually good at, you don't get a plus percent, so it doesn't matter. Well, I still have an intellect you know, IQ of 15. I'm not an idiot. Uh, I'm the type of guy that maybe one day when things settle down, I run my own construction company or something. Who knows? But I like the way this, I absolutely like the way this came out. When I, when I started looking at this, when I got to like this page, I was like, wow, this turned out really well. No, I'm not a big bruiser with a plus 15 to hit. I'm not, you know, somebody, uh, you know, who does plus eight, you know, 10 points of damage. I'm not. But you saw my skills. You saw what I'm good at. I'm not the combat monster. I'm the support character in so many different ways, so many different ways. And we'll look at those in a little bit. ME14 again, or really it's the MA that's more important here. No bonuses, but I kind of look at if I want to be a foreman, if I want to be a sergeant, if I want to be a lieutenant, I'm going to need people to trust me. Physical strength, I raise that to 13. Physical prowess is a 12. Hey, come on, I'm a duck. Uh, physical endurance, 13. Physical beauty, 12. And speed, 15. Look at how much I got that speed raised. Uh, you know, better rolls could have done something better for me. Again, I could have taken running. I really, you know what? Now that I have that blacksmith skill available to me, I probably would take running. And running would give me some SDC as well, if I remember correctly. What does what running give? Well, we'll look at that. Uh, so, my character isn't even built properly here. And I'm not going to fix that part on the stream here. You already saw me fix one thing. But uh, my guess is that, because I was really debating taking running. I was like, does running fit my character, though? And what I thought of is, yeah, it does. Because I picture my character getting into situations that other people are covering him for. Like, dude, we're covering. Go, go, go. And my character's like, all right. I can fly in. I can, I can run in. It depends on the situation. So that, that's how I looked at it. So I think I'm going to increase that speed. I'll, I'll have an updated set of slides or something for people to download later on. Um, hit points. Again, we saw 18 and 73. Strike with the bat. This is at level one, folks. This is at level one. I have a plus four to strike with my... Uh, what was Negan's bat name? I forget. He named his bat. Uh, Yeah, there you go, Mahawkin. You're right. Yeah, exceptionally average, right? But got some SDC. But again, exceptionally average. There's nothing wrong with an average character. Nothing wrong with it. And I don't think my character's average if you look at his skills. But, but fair enough, yeah. Uh, I know people, and this is definitely not going to my chat because nobody in chat has said this yet. This, you, know, you can play characters that don't have 22s and 24s. You absolutely can. I've done it a bunch. And in TMNT, it's actually pretty commonplace. I'm sorry, this is after the bomb now, but you, you know what I'm saying. Like, this is... I like this character. I really, really do. Duck with a large blacksmith hammer. Hammers? The name, the name is Quack. <laughs> That's actually good, because I took Blunt. That hammer is a great idea. There you go. Look at that. You guys are actually already expanding upon the idea here. Strike to disarm. Oh, uh, I can't remember where this came from. Did this come from... Oh, this came from, uh, uh, what did this come oh, from being a duck, a militia? I think this came from being a militia. It doesn't matter. Um, I probably stayed up elsewhere. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be the skill list in a minute. Uh, I'm a vehicle gunner, so I get a plus two to strike if I'm being a vehicle gunner. My, my natural hand-to-hand -hand strike is plus zero, but if I'm using a knife, it's plus one. I get a parry plus one and blunt plus one. I don't know. Uh, that's for parrying. Oh, that, these, these are parry over here, so here we go. Now, by the way, this bat includes the blunt plus one put into it. So that four is final. Plus one to dodge, but I get a plus two to dodge in water. Roll punch, fall impact four, and pull punch is four. Yes, exactly, Raven's there. He's the vehicle mechanic that can be a support gunner at the drop of a hat. First level character, guys, the first level character. All right, my skills. Now, we have to fix one of these skills. We have to fix that navigation skill, or it's going to make me angry. So there we go. Navigation skill. And now let's go, let's go back to... So, got the baseball batter thing. I don't know why it's 64 plus 4 for baseball batter, but hey, whatever, you know. Uh, and the way I organize these things are percentage ones first, physical ones second, hand-to-hand, -hand, and then weapon proficiencies just to kind of group them up a little better. So here we go. As part of my elite militia, I played baseball. I was a blacksmith, had some navigation, 
you know, got to be able to run around those bases, right? <laughs> Excuse me in a second. And then I took athletics wrestling. So I might not have, you know, taken uh, all the, uh, the gun, the gun fighting, but I did get wrestling. Took some, uh, knife, semi-automatic pistol, and heavy military weapons. My secondary skills are first aid, lo locate secret compartments and doors. Does that make a little more sense to you guys now? Why I took that? When you put all these other ones together? Hey, this isn't on the blueprint. Hey, this looks like this could be a false stone. You know, something like that. So, uh, swimming, bodybuilding, blunt, and, uh, where did I have that other blacksmith skill? Well, again, I'll figure that out. I will update this, and if I can, if I can take running, I'm gonna put running on here. If not, well, I'll put whatever skill I can take, because it might have been one of those that was limited to something. Because some of the skills were limited to certain, uh, 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 professions, whatever, they, whatever they're called. I forget. Scholastic, <laughs> they're not scholastic skills anymore, but. And here you go, my aircraft mechanic. Oh! Did I not talk? Wait, did I not make that slide? Uh oh. Get a basic. Oh, crap. I didn't make that slide. All right, well. Yes, uh, you know what? I completely forgot about it. I told you guys to, to wait till later, and then there was no later. Uh, yes, I took aircraft mechanics and automobile mechanics because I had a couple extras that I could add in. I took aircraft mechanics, automob uh, automobile mechanics, because I wanted to be an all-around uh, mechanic. I did not take boat or whatever it was, but... Uh, uh, so there's blacksmith again, so it is on here twice. I didn't even notice it, because <laughs> I was just copying and pasting. Where did that slide go? I had a slide for that. hope I didn't change it out and screwed it up. Now I really have to look over the character. But, uh, let's see, electronics, general repair, literacy, locksmith. You can see how these are all going down here. Pilots. I can pilot automobile, construction, and farming. These are combines and tractors and so forth. If you're wondering, why is it a 54%? Look, I can combine a field, no problem. What this is for is if I'm trying to do any sort of trick driving or trying to do something outside the scope of the vehicle. Stunts, I think they're called in Palladium. Um, plumbing. And there you go. Vehicle weapon systems, because again, it kind of went with the gunnery side of it. I, I'm now feeling like uh, I missed a slide completely. Or I gave myself too many skills, and I, and I didn't notice. I'm really nervous about that now. But generally speaking, you see how to make a character, even if I did make mistakes. Hey, don't forget, Heathen Dog made mistakes as well. <laughs> he knows better than I do. My equipment. Basic clothing, basically, we already talked about this. So I picked the uh, Cardanian assault rifle because I get an assault rifle. I took the 9mm pistol. Good quality bat because it said you get a good quality ancient weapon. I took a good quality bat used as a club. And I have my 100 bucks. And yes, I will wrap my bat with, oh, uh, you know what? Ha wrapping uh, barbed wire around it probably wouldn't be something a scrupulous character does, is it? And there you go. I will, I promise you this, I will take the time to uh, go through the character to make sure that it is 100% right in the future, and I will have these slides available, because Heathen Dog wants me to, uh, available to people in the future. So you can see, you know, if you want to play the duck, I don't have a character sheet. I always make my own character sheet, so I don't have one for this game. Uh, so, do, do, do. let's see. Easy flight speed is a separate uh, score that comes listed with the specific flight power. This one, it talked about the flight speed. With the, I have after bomb, I can look. What? So my Hawkman was, uh, I once played a 5e character who used a sledgehammer. Yeah, I, I once played a, uh, well, I played a DD d character that used paired crowbars, and I didn't even have a uh, paired proficiency. Two-weapon fighting style or whatever it's called. I did better with that than I did with the weapons I was proficient in. These crowbars. So. Okay, well, that is, that is character creation. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you find out exactly where I made other errors, uh, go ahead and point them out. I will fix up uh, the slide deck to make sure. I am actually going to go through the character from scratch. I have all my dice rolls, except for the last one for, for the holding breath on my Discord. I'll verify everything to see what I did wrong. I may have added a couple extra skills at the, and forgot about it, forgot to take them out. I don't think so, though. Uh, I'm, I think I just forgot to make the slide because I copied and pasted all of those from slides, which is really weird. And then verified the numbers afterwards. 
Yes, my eye is... Can you see it? <laughs> yes. It's not nearly as bad as it was. Uh, it got... Yesterday was really bad. But right now, it's... Uh, it is what it is. So... It's not pink eye. I had somebody say it's pink eye. My eye actually isn't pink. You're seeing the swelling in the eye, uh, the eyelid. Uh, my eye itself is fine. So, unless it's different now. Actually, it looks like it might be pink. I think that's from the goo my wife put on it. Uh, but whatever. It is what it is. How would I get pink eye? Well, I was at the hospital. <laughs> Okay, everyone, uh, I'm going to leave it there. I don't see a lot of questions in chat, and I want to move on to the next segment. This one was kind of longish, but I hope you got an understanding of how to make a character. Like I said, any mistakes will be corrected in the slides. If, uh, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate all the chat that came in, people talking about this, because I know there are a couple other streams going on that people wanted to watch. So I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, always remember, let's go through our uh, just the last proclivity here. Oh, next week. Next week, we start Beyond the Supernatural. Remember, this is the year of Palladium Books. We start Beyond the Supernatural. And I think the interesting thing about this is going to be, I don't think Heathen Dog or I, either of us have played this. I know I haven't played it. Hey, Biggest Geek, is uh, T-Shirt Historian's stream done? Already? Well, welcome aboard. I guess it has been almost two hours. Wow. That was a long segment I went through. Uh, movies are starting... Uh, by the way, if you guys haven't, go ahead and subscribe to Biggest Geekus. Let me put his name on. He's got some good things in the works. Check that out. He's just short of 250 subscriptions. When he hits 250 subscriptions, he's going to have a giveaway, so check him out. But don't let him get to 500 subscriptions, because then he says he's going to stop drinking Mountain Dew, and nobody should do that. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, Beyond the Supernatural starting next week, and I think it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll start off with what is it, because, yeah, what is it? I don't even fully know what it is. You know, is, is it like the Supernatural TV show? Is it like playing Call of Cthulhu, Palladium version? Is it the X-Files? I don't know. We're going to find out. So, uh, so there we go. All right. Hey, he made 250. Still, if you're not subbed to him, go sub to Biggest Geekus. Really should. And finally, to, to get us on out of here, we believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds and that the focus of your tabletop group should be on role-playing and having a good time. Core values of hashtag RPGate and any good tabletop community are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity.